Wi-Fi uses similar frequencies as mobile phones. Let's compare the radiation emitted by these different wireless devices. The official SAR values are measurements of the rate at which radio frequency, electromagnetic energy, is absorbed by the human body from mobile and wireless devices. These SAR values are based on a short six-minute average temperature measurement of a liquid-filled model of an adult male-sized head. The SAR value of the iPad on Wi-Fi is higher than most phones, and the higher the value, the more RFEM energy is absorbed by the human body. In a real-life test, an iPhone and an iPad were measured using an RF EMR meter. First, the iPhone. A call was put through, and the measurement was taken on talk mode. The meter peaked at 19, with a continuous signal for the duration of the call. Let's compare this to an iPad using Wi-Fi. In this video, the Wi-Fi is turned on, but it's not downloading anything or surfing the internet. Even so, the iPad peaks at 70, which is over three times higher than the iPhone on talk mode. This signal is intermittent and spikes every few seconds for as long as the Wi-Fi is on. So how much time do we spend using these Wi-Fi enabled tablets? It's likely to be a lot longer than the time spent talking on the phone. If you're playing games or surfing the internet, it could possibly be for hours every day. Let's take the iPad apart and look to see where the antenna is located. It may surprise you to know that there are in fact five antennas inside an iPad. The Wi-Fi antennas are located in the section behind the button and behind the Apple sign at the back. This is where the wireless radiation is the most powerful. So how do kids use these tablets? Let's just review this. An iPad using Wi-Fi puts out pulses of wireless radiation at peak levels higher than an iPhone on talk mode. It does this even when you aren't surfing the internet. The official SAR value for an iPad is higher than most phones. The antennas are in places that can be in contact with the body, including reproductive organs. At present, scientists have no idea what will happen when exposures will last for a lifetime. Yet schools are introducing tablets and other Wi-Fi enabled devices to children at an increasingly earlier age. Mobile apps for school children have also been produced by education departments. Is this what we want our children to be exposed to for extended periods of time? At home, parents can follow up Hans's advice and take steps to reduce exposure. At school, however, parents and children are not being given a choice and children are being exposed involuntarily. Apanza states that Apatha does not regulate policy in the education department. It is up to schools to apply the precautionary minimization requirement in the Apanza standard as they see fit. The education departments say they are within Apanza standards. Yet keep in mind, these standards only protect against short-term heating injury measured using a liquid-filled model. So who exactly? is taking responsibility to protect children's long-term health which may be affected from prolonged low-level exposure to wireless technologies. Technologies that are currently being promoted and mandated in schools.